The balanced scorecard is a strategy performance management tool, a semi-standard structured report, supported by design methods and automation tools, that can be used by managers to keep track of the execution of activities by the staff within their control and to monitor the consequences arising from these actions. The critical characteristics that define a balanced scorecard are, its focus on the strategic agenda of the organization concerned, the selection of a small number of data items to monitor, a mix of financial and non-financial data items. Use Balanced scorecard is an example of a closed-loop controller or cybernetic control applied to the management of the implementation of a strategy. Closed-loop or cybernetic control is where actual performance is measured. The measured value is compared to an expected value and based on the difference between the two corrective interventions are made as required. Such control requires three things to be effective, a choice of data to measure, the setting of an expected value for the data, and the ability to make a corrective intervention. Within the strategy management context, all three of these characteristic closed-loop control elements need to be derived from the organization's strategy and also need to reflect the ability of the observer to both monitor performance and subsequently intervene, both of which may be constrained. Two of the ideas that underpin modern balanced scorecard designs concern facilitating the creation of such a control, through making it easier to select which data to observe, and ensuring that the choice of data is consistent with the ability of the observer to intervene. History, organizations have used systems consisting of a mix of financial and non-financial measures to track progress for quite some time. One such system was created by Arch Neerman in 1987 at Analog Devices, a mid-sized semiconductor company. The Analog Devices Balanced Scorecard Schneiderman's design was similar to what is now recognized as a first-generation balanced scorecard design. In 1990 Arch Schneiderman participated in an unrelated research study in 1990 led by Dr. Robert S. Kaplan in conjunction with U.S. management consultancy Nolan Norton, and during this study described his work on performance measurement. Subsequently, Kaplan and David P. Norton included anonymous details of this balanced scorecard design in a 1992 article. Kaplan and Norton's article wasn't the only paper on the topic published in early 1992 but the 1992 Kaplan and Norton paper was a popular success, and was quickly followed by a second in 1993. In 1996, the two authors published a book The Balanced Scorecard. These articles and the first book spread knowledge of the concept of balanced scorecard widely, and has led to Kaplan and Norton being seen as the creators of the concept. While the balanced scorecard terminology was coined by Arch Neerman, the roots of performance management is an activity run deep in management literature and practice. Management historians such as Alfred Chandler suggest the origins of performance management can be seen in the emergence of the complex organization most notably during the 19th century in the USA. More recent influences may include the pioneering work of General Electric on performance measurement reporting in the 1950s and the work of French process engineers in the early part of the 20th century. The tool also draws strongly on the ideas of the resource-based view of the firm proposed by Edith Penrose. However it should be noted that none of these influences is explicitly linked to original descriptions of balanced scorecard by Schneiderman, Meisel, or Kaplan and Norton. Kaplan and Norton's first book remains their most popular. The book reflects the earliest incarnations of balanced scorecards, effectively restating the concept as described in the second Harvard Business Review article. Their second book, the strategy-focused organization, echoed work by others on the value of visually documenting the links between measures by proposing the strategic linkage model, or strategy map. As the title of Kaplan and Norton's second book highlights, even by 2000 the focus of attention among thought leaders was moving from the design of balanced scorecards themselves, towards the use of balanced scorecard as a focal point within a more comprehensive strategic management system. Subsequent writing on balance scorecard by Kaplan and Norton has focused on uses of balance scorecard rather than its design, however many others have continued to refine the device itself, for example Abernethy A.L. Characteristics, 
The characteristics of the balanced scorecard and its derivatives is the presentation of a mixture of financial and non-financial measures each compared to a target value within a single concise report. The report is not meant to be a replacement for traditional financial or operational reports but a succinct summary that captures the information most relevant to those reading it. It is the method by which this most relevant information is determined that most differentiates the various versions of the tool in circulation. The balanced scorecard indirectly also provides a useful insight into an organization's strategy, by requiring general strategic statements to be precipitated into more specific slash tangible forms. The first versions of balanced scorecard asserted that relevance should derive from the corporate strategy, and proposed design methods that focused on choosing measures and targets associated with the main activities required to implement the strategy. As the initial audience for this were the readers of the Harvard Business Review, the proposal was translated into a form that made sense to a typical reader of that journal, managers of U.S. commercial businesses. Accordingly, initial designs were encouraged to measure three categories of non-financial measure in addition to financial outputs, those of customer, internal business processes, and learning and growth. These categories were not so relevant to non-profits or units within complex organizations, and much of the early literature on balance scorecard focused on suggestions of alternative perspectives that might have more relevance to these groups. Modern balance scorecards have evolved since the initial ideas proposed in the late 1980s and early 1990s, and the modern performance management tools including balance scorecard are significantly improved, being more flexible and more effective. Design Design of a balanced scorecard is about the identification of a small number of financial and non-financial measures and attaching targets to them, so that when they are reviewed it is possible to determine whether current performance meets expectations. By alerting managers to areas where performance deviates from expectations, they can be encouraged to focus their attention on these areas, and hopefully as a result trigger improved performance within the part of the organization they lead. The original thinking behind a balance scorecard was for it to be focused on information relating to the implementation of a strategy, and over time there has been a blurring of the boundaries between conventional strategic planning and control activities and those required to design a balanced scorecard. This is illustrated well by the four steps required to design a balanced scorecard included in Kaplan and Norton's writing on the subject in the late 1990s, translating the vision into operational goals communicating the vision and link it to individual performance. Business planning. Index setting, feedback and learning, and adjusting the strategy accordingly. These steps go far beyond the simple task of identifying a small number of financial and non-financial measures, but illustrate the requirement for whatever design process is used to fit within broader thinking about how the resulting balance scorecard will integrate with the wider business management process. Although it helps focus managers' attention on strategic issues and the management of the implementation of strategy, it is important to remember that the balanced scorecard itself has no role in the formation of strategy. In fact, balanced scorecards can coexist with strategic planning systems and other tools. First Generation Balanced Scorecard the first generation of balanced scorecard designs used a four-perspective approach to identify what measures to use to track the implementation of strategy. The original four perspectives proposed were, financial encourages the identification of a few relevant high-level financial measures. In particular, designers were encouraged to choose measures that helped inform the answer to the question, how do we look to shareholders? Examples, cash flow, sales growth, operating income, return on equity. Customer, encouraged the identification of measures that answer the question, how do customers see us? Examples, percent of sales from new products, on-time delivery, share of important customers a euro unregistered trademark purchases, ranking by important customers. Internal business processes, encouraged the identification of measures that answer the question, what must we excel at? Examples, cycle time, unit cost, yield, new product introductions. Learning and growth, encourage the identification of measures that answer the question, how can we continue to improve, create value and innovate. Examples, 
time to develop new generation of products, life cycle to product maturity, time to market versus competition. The idea was that managers used these perspective headings to prompt the selection of a small number of measures that informed on that aspect of the organization's strategic performance. The perspective headings show that Kaplan and Norton were thinking about the needs of non-divisional commercial organizations in their initial design. These headings are not very helpful to other kinds of organizations, and much of what has been written on balance scorecards since has, in one way or another, focused on the identification of alternative headings more suited to a broader range of organizations, and also suggested using either additional or fewer perspectives, on, L. Falk, Brignall, Owen, Radnor A.L. These suggestions were notably triggered by a recognition that different but equivalent headings would yield alternative sets of measures, and this represents the major design challenge faced with this type of balanced scorecard design, justifying the choice of measures made. Of all the measures you could have chosen, why did you choose these? These issues contribute to dissatisfaction with early balanced scorecard designs, since if users are not confident that the measures within the balanced scorecard are well chosen, they will have less confidence in the information it provides. Although less common, these early style balanced scorecards are still designed and used today. In short, First-generation balanced scorecards are hard to design in a way that builds confidence that they are well designed. Because of this, many are abandoned soon after completion. Second-generation balanced scorecard, in the mid-1990s, an improved design method emerged. In the new method, measures are selected based on a set of strategic objectives plotted on a strategic linkage model, or strategy map. With this modified approach, the strategic objectives are distributed across the four measurement perspectives, so as to connect the dots to form a visual presentation of strategy and measures. In this modified version of balanced scorecard design, managers select a few strategic objectives within each of the perspectives, and then define the cause-effect chain among these objectives by drawing links between them to create a strategic linkage model. A balanced scorecard of strategic performance measures is then derived directly by selecting one or two measures for each strategic objectives. This type of approach provides greater contextual justification for the measures chosen, and is generally easier for managers to work through. This style of balanced scorecard has been commonly used since 1996 or so, it is significantly different in approach to the methods originally proposed and so can be thought of as representing the second generation of design approach adopted for balance scorecard since its introduction. Third generation balance scorecard, in the late 1990s, the design approach had evolved yet again. One problem with the second generation design approach described above was that the plotting of causal links amongst 20 or so medium term strategic goals was still a relatively abstract activity. In practice it ignored the fact that opportunities to intervene, to influence strategic goals are, and need to be, anchored in the now, in current and real management activity. Secondly, the need to roll forward, and test the impact of these goals necessitated the creation of an additional design instrument. The vision or destination statement. This device was a statement of what strategic success, or the strategic end state looked like. It was quickly realized, that if a destination statement was created at the beginning of the design process then it was easier to select strategic activity and outcome objectives to respond to it. Measures and targets could then be selected to track the achievement of these objectives. Design methods that incorporate a destination statement, or equivalent represent a tangibly different design approach to those that went before, and have been proposed as representing a third generation design method for balanced scorecard. Design methods for balanced scorecards continue to evolve and adapt to reflect the deficiencies in the currently used methods, and the particular needs of communities of interest. This generation refined the second generation of the balanced scorecard to give the strategic objectives more relevance and functionality. The major difference is the incorporation of destination statements. Other key components consist of strategic objectives, strategic linkage model and perspectives, and measures and initiatives. Popularity, in 1997, 
Kurtzman found that 64% of the companies questioned were measuring performance from a number of perspectives in a similar way to the balanced scorecard. Balanced scorecards have been implemented by government agencies, military units, business units and corporations as a whole, non-profit organizations, and schools. Balanced scorecard has been widely adopted, and has been found to be the most popular performance management framework in a recent survey. Many examples of balanced scorecards can be found via web searches. However, adapting one organization's balanced scorecard to another is generally not advised by theorists, who believe that much of the benefit of the balanced scorecard comes from the design process itself. Indeed, it could be argued that many failures in the early days of balanced scorecard could be attributed to this problem, in that early balanced scorecards were often designed remotely by consultants. Managers did not trust, and so failed to engage with and use, these measure suites created by people lacking knowledge of the organization and management responsibility. Variants, since the balance scorecard was popularized in the early 1990s, a large number of alternatives to the original four-box balanced scorecard promoted by Kaplan and Norton in their various articles and books have emerged. Most have very limited application and are typically proposed either by academics as vehicles for promoting other agendas, for example Brignall or consultants as an attempt at differentiation to promote sales of books and slash or consultancy. Niven. Many of the structural variations proposed are broadly similar, and a research paper published in 2004 attempted to identify a pattern in these variations, noting three distinct types of variation. The variations appeared to be part of an evolution of the balanced scorecard concept, and so the paper refers to these distinct types as generations. Broadly, the original measures in boxes type design constitutes the first generation balanced scorecard design. Balanced scorecard designs that include a strategy map or strategic linkage model constitute the second generation of balanced scorecard design and designs that augment the strategy map slash strategic linkage model with a separate document describing the long-term outcomes sought from the strategy comprise the third-generation balanced scorecard design. Variants that feature adaptations of the structure of balanced scorecard to suit better a particular viewpoint or agenda are numerous. Examples of the focus of such adaptations include green issues, decision support, public sector management, and healthcare management. The performance management elements of the UN's results-based management system have strong design and structural similarities to those used in the third-generation balanced scorecard design approach. Balanced scorecard is also often linked to quality management tools and activities. Although there are clear areas of crossover and association, the two sets of tools are complementary rather than duplicative. A common use of balanced scorecard is to support the payments of incentives to individuals even though it was not designed for this purpose and is not particularly suited to it. Criticism, the balanced scorecard has attracted criticism from a variety of sources. Most has come from the academic community, who dislike the empirical nature of the framework. Kaplan and Norton notoriously failed to include any citation of prior art in their initial papers on the topic. Some of this criticism focuses on technical flaws in the methods and design of the original balanced scorecard proposed by Kaplan and Norton. Other academics have simply focused on the lack of citation support. A second kind of criticism is that the balanced scorecard does not provide a bottom-line score or a unified view with clear recommendations, it is simply a list of metrics. These critics usually include in their criticism suggestions about how the unanswered question postulated could be answered, but typically the unanswered question relate to things outside the scope of balanced scorecard itself. A third kind of criticism is that the model fails to fully reflect the needs of stakeholders, putting bias on financial stakeholders over others. Early forms of balanced scorecard proposed by Kaplan and Norton focused on the needs of commercial organizations in the USA where this focus on investment return was appropriate. This focus was maintained through subsequent revisions. Even now over 20 years after they were first proposed, the four most common perspectives in balanced scorecard designs mirror the four proposed in the original Kaplan and Norton paper. However, as noted earlier in this wiki page, 
there have been many studies that suggest other perspectives might better reflect the priorities of organizations, particularly but not exclusively relating to the needs of organizations in the public and non-governmental sectors. More modern design approaches such as third-generation balance scorecard and the UN's results-based management methods explicitly consider the interests of wider stakeholder groups, and perhaps address this issue in its entirety. There are few empirical studies linking the use of balanced scorecards to better decision-making or improved financial performance of companies, but some work has been done in these areas. However, broadcast surveys of usage have difficulties in this respect, due to the wide variations in definition of what a balanced scorecard is noted above. Single organization case studies suffer from the lack of a control issue common to any study of organizational change. You don't know what the organization would have achieved if the change had not been made, so it is difficult to attribute changes observed over time to a single intervention. However, such studies as have been done have typically found balanced scorecard to be useful. Software tools It is important to recognize that the balanced scorecard by definition is not a complex thing, typically no more than about 20 measures spread across a mix of financial and non-financial topics and easily reported manually. The processes of collecting, reporting, and distributing balanced scorecard information can be labor-intensive and prone to procedural problems. The simplest mechanism to use is to delegate these activities to an individual, and many balanced scorecards are reported via ad hoc methods based around email, phone calls and office software. In more complex organizations, where there are multiple balanced scorecards to report and or a need for coordination of results between balanced scorecards the use of individual reporters is problematic. Where these conditions apply, organizations use balanced scorecard reporting software to automate the production and distribution of these reports. Recent surveys have consistently found that roughly one-third of organizations used office software to report their balanced scorecard, one-third used software developed specifically for their own use, as one-third used one of the many commercial packages available. See also, Management Cockpit, Digital Dashboard, also known as Business Dashboard, Enterprise Dashboard or Executive Dashboard, Key Performance Indicators, Performance Management, Strategic Management, Strategy Map, Third Generation Balance Scorecard, Strategic Control, References.